Neil McGill Gorsuch, born August 29, 1967, is an Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States. He was nominated by President Donald Trump to succeed Antonin Scalia and took the oath of office on April 10, 2017. Gorsuch is a proponent of textualism in statutory interpretation and originalism in interpreting the United States Constitution. Along with Justice Clarence Thomas, he is an advocate of natural law jurisprudence. Gorsuch clerked for Judge David B. Sintel of the U.S. Court of Appeals for the D.C. Circuit from 1991 to 1992, and then for U.S. Supreme Court Justices Byron White and Anthony Kennedy, from 1993 to 1994. He is the first Supreme Court Justice to serve alongside another Justice for whom he once had clerked Anthony Kennedy, from 1995 to 2005. Gorsuch was in private practice with the law firm of Kellogg, Huber, Hansen, Todd, Evans and Figgle. Gorsuch was Principal Deputy Associate Attorney General at the U.S. Department of Justice from 2005 to his appointment to the Tenth Circuit. Gorsuch was nominated to the United States Court of Appeals for the Tenth Circuit by President George W. Bush on May 10, 2006, to replace Judge David M. Ebel, who took senior status in 2006. He holds a Bachelor of Arts from Columbia University, Juris Doctor from Harvard University, and Doctor of Philosophy in Law from the University College, Oxford, where he took courses and defended a doctoral thesis, concerning the morality of assisted suicide, under the supervision of philosopher John Finnis. <laughs> Early life and education Gorsuch is the son of David Ronald Gorsuch (1937–2001) and Anne Gorsuch Burford (née Anne Irene McGill, 1942–2004), a Colorado House of Representatives member who was later appointed by President Ronald Reagan to be the first female administrator of United States Environmental Protection Agency in 1981. A fourth-generation Coloradan, Gorsuch was born in Denver, Colorado, and attended Christ the King, a K-8 Catholic school. In 1985, he graduated from Georgetown Preparatory School, a Jesuit school in North Bethesda, Maryland. While attending Georgetown Prep, Gorsuch served as a United States Senate page in the early 1980s. He received his Bachelor of Arts degree in Political Science from Columbia University in 1988, where he was inducted into Phi Beta Kappa. He was also a member of Phi Gamma Delta fraternity. As an undergraduate student, he wrote for the Columbia Daily Spectator student newspaper. In 1986, he co founded the alternative Columbia student newspaper The Fed. Gorsuch attended Harvard Law School where he graduated cum laude in 1991 with a Juris Doctor. He received a Harry S. Truman scholarship to attend. While at Harvard, Gorsuch was an editor on the Harvard Journal of Law and Public Policy. He was described as a committed conservative who supported the Gulf War and congressional term limits, on a campus full of ardent liberals. Former President Barack Obama was one of Gorsuch's classmates at Harvard Law. In 2004, he was awarded a DPHIL in Law Legal Philosophy from the University of Oxford, where he completed research on assisted suicide and euthanasia as a postgraduate student of University College, Oxford. A Marshall Scholarship enabled him to study at Oxford, where he was supervised by the natural law philosopher John Finnis. In 1996, Gorsuch married his wife Louise, an English woman and champion equestrian on Oxford's riding team whom he met during his stay at Oxford. <laughs> Early legal career Clerkships <laughs> 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 Gorsuch served as a judicial clerk for Judge David B. Sintel of the United States Court of Appeals for the D.C. Circuit from 1991 to 1992, and then for Supreme Court of the United States Justices Byron White and Anthony Kennedy from 1993 to 1994. Gorsuch's work with White occurred right after White retired from the Supreme Court, therefore, Gorsuch assisted White with his work on the Tenth Circuit, where White sat by designation. Gorsuch was part of a group of five law clerks assigned that year which included Brett Kavanaugh who described Gorsuch at the time stating, he fit into the place very easily. He's just an easy guy to get along with. He doesn't have sharp elbows. We had a wide range of views, but we all really got along well. 
Topic private law practice Instead of joining an established law firm, Gorsuch decided to join the two-year-old boutique firm Kellogg, Huber, Hansen, Todd, Evans and Figel, where he focused on trial work. After winning his first trial as lead attorney, a jury member told Gorsuch he was like Perry Mason. He was an associate in the Washington, D.C., law firm from 1995 to 1997 and a partner from 1998 to 2005. Gorsuch's clients included Colorado billionaire Philip Anschutz. At Kellogg Huber, Gorsuch focused on commercial matters, including contracts, antitrust, RICO, and securities fraud. In 2002, Gorsuch penned an op ed criticizing the Senate for delaying the nominations of Merrick Garland and John Roberts to the United States Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit, writing that the most impressive judicial nominees are grossly mistreated by the Senate. In 2005, at Kellogg Huber, Gorsuch wrote a brief denouncing class action lawsuits by shareholders. In the case of Dura Pharmaceuticals, Inc. v. Bruto, Gorsuch opined that the free ride to fast riches enjoyed by securities class action attorneys in recent years appeared to hit a speed bump and that the problem is that securities fraud litigation imposes an enormous toll on the economy, affecting virtually every public corporation in America at one time or another and costing businesses billions of dollars in settlements every year. U.S. Department of Justice Gorsuch served as principal deputy to the Associate Attorney General, Robert McCallum, at the United States Department of Justice from 2005 until 2006. As McCallum's principal deputy, Gorsuch assisted in managing the Department of Justice's civil litigation components, which included antitrust, civil, civil rights, environment, and tax divisions. While managing the United States Department of Justice Civil Division, Gorsuch was tasked with all the terror litigation arising from the president's war on terror, successfully defending the extraordinary rendition of Khalid el-Masri, fighting the disclosure of Abu Ghraib torture and prisoner abuse photographs, and, in November 2005, traveling to inspect the Guantanamo Bay detention camp, Gorsuch helped Attorney General Alberto Gonzalez prepare for hearings after the public revelation of NSA warrantless surveillance 2001-07, and worked with Senator Lindsey Graham in drafting the provisions in the Detainee Treatment Act which attempted to strip federal courts of jurisdiction over the detainees. Tenure as U.S. Circuit Judge 2006 to 2017. In January 2006, Philip Anschutz recommended Gorsuch's nomination to Colorado's U.S. Senator Wayne Allard and White House Counsel Harriet Mears. On May 10, 2006, Gorsuch was nominated by President George W. Bush to the seat on the United States Court of Appeals for the Tenth Circuit vacated by Judge David M. Ebel, who was taking senior status. Like Gorsuch, Ebel was a former clerk of Supreme Court Justice Byron R. White. The American Bar Association's Standing Committee on the Federal Judiciary unanimously rated him, well qualified. In 2006, just over two months later, on July 20, 2006, Gorsuch was confirmed by unanimous voice vote in the U.S. Senate. Gorsuch was President Bush's fifth appointment to the Tenth Circuit. When Gorsuch began his tenure at Denver's Byron White United States Courthouse, Justice Anthony Kennedy administered the oath of office. During his time on the Court of Appeals, ten of Gorsuch's law clerks went on to become Supreme Court clerks, and he was sometimes regarded as a feeder judge. One of his former clerks, Jonathan Papik, became an associate justice of the Nebraska Supreme Court in 2018. During his time on the circuit court, since 2008, Gorsuch was a Thompson visiting professor at the University of Colorado Law School, teaching one course per semester, either ethics or antitrust law. Topic: <laughs> Freedom of Religion. Gorsuch advocates a broad definition of religious freedom that is inimical to church-state separation advocates. In Hobby Lobby Stores v. Sibelius, 2013, Gorsuch wrote a concurrence when the N Bank Circuit found the Affordable Care Act's contraceptive mandate on a private business violated the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. That ruling was upheld 5 to 4 by the Supreme Court in Burwell v. Hobby Lobby Stores, Inc., 2014. When a panel of the court denied similar claims under the same act in Little Sisters of the Poor Home for the Aged v. 
Burwell 2015, Gorsuch joined judges Harris Hartz, Paul Joseph Kelly Jr., Timothy Timkovich, and Jerome Holmes in their dissent to the denial of rehearing en banc. That ruling was vacated and remanded to the Tenth Circuit by the per curiam Supreme Court in Zuick v. Burwell 2016, in Pleasant Grove City v. Summum 2007, he joined Judge Michael W. McConnell's dissent from the denial of rehearing en banc, taking the view that the government's display of a donated Ten Commandments monument in a public park did not obligate the government to display other offered monuments. Most of the dissent's view was subsequently adopted by the Supreme Court, which reversed the judgment of the Tenth Circuit. Gorsuch has written that, "...the law doesn't just apply to protect popular religious beliefs, it does perhaps its most important work in protecting unpopular religious beliefs, vindicating this nation's long-held aspiration to serve as a refuge of religious tolerance." Topic administrative law Gorsuch has called for reconsideration of Chevron USA, Inc. v. Natural Resources Defense Council, Inc. 1984, in which the Supreme Court instructed courts to grant deference to federal agencies' interpretation of ambiguous laws and regulations. In Gutierrez Brizuela v. Lynch 2016, Gorsuch wrote for a unanimous panel finding that court review was required before an executive agency could reject the circuit court's interpretation of an immigration law, alone. Gorsuch added a concurring opinion, criticizing Chevron deference and National Cable and Telecommunications Asin v. Brand X Internet Services 2005 as an abdication of judicial duty, writing that deference is more than a little difficult to square with the constitution of the framers' design, in United States v. Hinckley 2008, Gorsuch argued that one possible reading of the Sex Offender Registration and Notification Act likely violates the non-delegation doctrine. Antonin Scalia and Ruth Bader Ginsburg had held the same view in their 2012 dissent of Reynolds v. United States. <laughs> Interstate commerce Gorsuch has been an opponent of the Dormant Commerce Clause, which allows state laws to be declared unconstitutional if they too greatly burden interstate commerce. In 2011, Gorsuch joined a unanimous panel finding that the Dormant Commerce Clause did not prevent the Oklahoma Water Resources Board from blocking water exports to Texas. That ruling was affirmed by a unanimous Supreme Court in Tarrant Regional Water District v. Herman 2013. In 2013, Gorsuch joined a unanimous panel finding that federal courts could not hear a challenge to Colorado's internet sales tax. That ruling was reversed by a unanimous Supreme Court in direct marketing Asin v. Broll 2015. In 2016, the Tenth Circuit panel rejected the challenger's dormant commerce clause claim, with Gorsuch writing a concurrence, in Energy and Environmental Legal Institute v. Joshua Eppel 2015, Gorsuch held that Colorado's mandates for renewable energy did not violate the Commerce Clause by putting out-of-state coal companies at a disadvantage. Gorsuch wrote that the Colorado Renewable Energy Law "...isn't a price control statute, it doesn't link prices paid in Colorado with those paid out-of-state, and it does not discriminate against out-of-staters." Campaign finance In Riddle v. Hickenlooper 2014, Gorsuch joined a unanimous panel of the Tenth Circuit in finding that it was unconstitutional for a Colorado law to set the limit on donations for write-in candidates at half the amount for major party candidates. Gorsuch added a concurrence where he noted that although the standard of review of campaign finance in the United States is unclear, the Colorado law would fail even under intermediate scrutiny. Civil rights In Planned Parenthood v. Gary Herbert 2016, Gorsuch wrote for the four dissenting judges when the Tenth Circuit denied a rehearing and bank of a divided panel opinion that had ordered the Utah governor to resume the organization's funding, which Herbert had blocked in response to a video controversy, in AM, on behalf of her minor child, FMV. Ann Holmes 2016, the Tenth Circuit considered a case in which a 13-year-old child was arrested for burping and laughing in gym class. The child was handcuffed and arrested based on a New Mexico statute that makes it a misdemeanor to disrupt school activities. 
The Child's family brought a federal 42 U.S.C. § 1983 civil rights action against school officials and the school resource officer who made the arrest, arguing that it was a false arrest that violated the child's constitutional rights. In a 94-page majority opinion, the Tenth Circuit held that the defendants enjoyed qualified immunity from suit. Gorsuch wrote a four-page dissent, arguing that the New Mexico Court of Appeals had long ago alerted law enforcement that the statute that the officer relied upon for the child's arrest does not criminalize noises or diversions that merely disturb order in a classroom. Topic: <laughs> Criminal law. In 2009, Gorsuch wrote for a unanimous panel finding that a court may still order criminals to pay restitution even after it missed a statutory deadline. That ruling was affirmed 5 to 4 by the Supreme Court in Dolan v. United States 2010, in United States of America v. Miguel Games Perez 2012, Gorsuch ruled on a case where a felon owned a gun in a jurisdiction where gun ownership by felons is illegal, however, the felon did not know that he was a felon at the time. Gorsuch concurred with the opinion that the only statutory element separating innocent even constitutionally protected gun possession from criminal conduct in sections 922 G and 924 A is a prior felony conviction. So the presumption that the government must prove mens rea here applies with full force. In 2013, Gorsuch joined a unanimous panel finding that intent does not need to be proven under a bank fraud statute. That ruling was affirmed by a Supreme Court unanimous in judgment in Lauren v. United States 2014. In 2015, Gorsuch wrote a dissent to the denial of rehearing en banc when the Tenth Circuit found that a convicted sex offender had to register with Kansas after he moved to the Philippines. The Tenth Circuit was then reversed by a unanimous Supreme Court in Nichols v. United States 2016. Topic. Death penalty Gorsuch favors a strict reading of the Anti-Terrorism and Effective Death Penalty Act of 1996 AEDPA. In 2015, he wrote for the court when it permitted Oklahoma Attorney General Scott Pruitt to order the execution of Scott Eisenberg, prompting a 30-page dissent by Judge Mary Beck Briscoe. After the state's unsuccessful execution of Clayton Lockett, Gorsuch joined Briscoe when the court unanimously allowed Attorney General Pruitt to continue using the same lethal injection protocol. That ruling was upheld 5-4 by the Supreme Court in Glossop v. Gross 2015. Topic. List of judicial opinions During his tenure on the United States Court of Appeals for the Tenth Circuit, Gorsuch authored 212 published opinions. Some of those are the following opinions. Topic. Nomination to Supreme Court During the U.S. presidential election in September 2016, candidate Donald Trump included Gorsuch, as well as his circuit colleague Timothy Timkovich, in a list of 21 current judges whom Trump would consider nominating to the Supreme Court if elected. After Trump took office in January 2017, unnamed Trump advisers listed Gorsuch in a shorter list of eight of those names, who they said were the leading contenders to be nominated to fill the seat left vacant by the death of Justice Antonin Scalia. On January 31, 2017, President Trump announced his nomination of Gorsuch to the Supreme Court. Gorsuch was 49 years old at the time of the nomination, making him the youngest nominee to the Supreme Court since the 1991 nomination of Clarence Thomas, who was 43. It was reported by the Associated Press that, as a courtesy, Gorsuch's first call after the nomination was to President Obama's pick for the same position, Merrick Garland, Chief Judge of the United States Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit. Garland had been nominated by Obama on March 16, 2016. Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman Chuck Grassley did not schedule a hearing for the nominee, leaving Garland's nomination to expire on January 3, 2017. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell invoked the so-called Biden Rule of 1992 to justify the Senate's refusal to consider the nomination of Merrick Garland in a general election year. Trump formally transmitted his nomination to the Senate on February 1, 2017. 
The American Bar Association unanimously gave Gorsuch its top rating, well qualified, to serve as Associate Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court. His confirmation hearing before the Senate started on March 20, 2017. On April 3, the Senate Judiciary Committee approved his nomination with a party line 11 to 9 vote. On April 6, 2017, Democrats filibustered prevented cloture the confirmation vote of Gorsuch, after which the Republicans invoked the nuclear option, allowing a filibuster of a Supreme Court nominee to be broken by a simple majority vote. On April 4, BuzzFeed and Politico ran articles highlighting similar language occurring in Gorsuch's book The Future of Assisted Suicide and Euthanasia and an earlier Law Review article by Abigail Lawless Kuzma, Indiana's Deputy Attorney General. Academic experts contacted by Politico differed in their assessment of what Gorsuch did, ranging from calling it a clear impropriety to mere sloppiness. John Finnis, who supervised Gorsuch's dissertation at Oxford, stated that, The allegation is entirely without foundation. The book is meticulous in its citation of primary sources. The allegation that the book is guilty of plagiarism because it does not cite secondary sources which draw on those same primary sources is, frankly, absurd. Kuzma stated, I have reviewed both passages and do not see an issue here, even though the language is similar. These passages are factual, not analytical in nature, framing both the technical legal and medical circumstances of the baby, infant doe case that occurred in 1982. In his book on Gorsuch, John Greenia described how Gorsuch was challenged during his confirmation hearings concerning some of his dissertation advisors' more strident views, which Gorsuch generally disagreed with. On April 7, 2017, the Senate confirmed Gorsuch's nomination to the Supreme Court by a 54 to 45 vote, with three Democrats Heidi Heitkamp, Joe Manchin, and Joe Donnelly joining all the Republicans in attendance. Gorsuch received his commission on April 8, 2017. He was sworn into office on Monday, April 10, 2017, in two ceremonies. The Chief Justice of the United States administered the first oath of office in a private ceremony at 9 a.m. at the Supreme Court, making Gorsuch the 101st Associate Justice of the Court. At 11 a.m., Justice Anthony M. Kennedy administered the second oath of office in a public ceremony at the White House Rose Garden. Tenure as Associate Justice 2017 present Topic <inaudible> <inaudible> Banking Regulation Gorsuch wrote his first US Supreme Court decision for a unanimous court in Henson v Santander Consumer USA Inc 582 US underscore 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 2017 Gorsuch and the court ruled against the borrowers, holding that Santander in this case is not a debt collector under the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act since they purchased the original defaulted car loans from City Financial for pennies on the dollar, making Santander the owner of the debts and not merely an agent. When the act was enacted, regulations were put on institutions that collected other companies' debts, but the act left unaddressed businesses collecting their own debts. Topic. Freedom of speech Gorsuch joined the majority in National Institute of Family and Life Advocates v. Becerra, and Janus v. AFSCME, which both held unconstitutional certain forms of compelled speech. Topic. Second Amendment Gorsuch joined Justice Thomas's dissent from denial of certiorari in Peruta v. San Diego County, in which the Ninth Circuit had upheld California's restrictive concealed carry laws. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Vagueness Doctrine. In Sessions v. DeMaia, the Supreme Court ruled 5-4 to uphold the Ninth Circuit's decision that the residual clause in the Immigration and Nationality Act was unconstitutionally vague. Gorsuch joined Justices Kagan, Ginsburg, Breyer, and Sotomayor in the opinion, as well as authoring a separate concurring opinion reiterating the importance of the vagueness doctrine within Justice Scalia's opinion in Johnson. Topic. 
Legal philosophy Gorsuch is a proponent of originalism, the idea that the Constitution should be interpreted as perceived at the time of enactment, and of textualism, the idea that statutes should be interpreted literally, without considering the legislative history and underlying purpose of the law. An editorial in the National Catholic Register opined that Gorsuch's judicial decisions lean more toward the natural law philosophy. Voting alignment. 538 used Lee Epstein et al.'s judicial common space scores which are not based on a judge's behavior, but rather the ideology scores of either home state senators or the appointing president to find a close alignment between the conservatism of other appellate and Supreme Court judges such as Brett Kavanaugh, Clarence Thomas, and Samuel Alito. The Washington Post's statistical analysis estimated that the ideologies of most of Trump's announced candidates were "...statistically indistinguishable." and also associated Gorsuch with Kavanaugh and Alito. Judicial <inaudible> <inaudible> activism <inaudible> 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 In a 2016 speech at Case Western Reserve University, Gorsuch said that judges should strive to apply the law as it is, focusing backward, not forward, and looking to text, structure, and history to decide what a reasonable reader at the time of the events in question would have understood the law to be not to decide cases based on their own moral convictions or the policy consequences they believe might serve society best. In a 2005 article published by National Review, Gorsuch argued that. American liberals have become addicted to the courtroom, relying on judges and lawyers rather than elected leaders and the ballot box, as the primary means of affecting their social agenda, and that they are failing to reach out and persuade the public. Gorsuch wrote that, in doing so, American liberals are circumventing the democratic process on issues like gay marriage, school vouchers, and assisted suicide, and this has led to a compromised judiciary, which is no longer independent. Gorsuch wrote that American liberals' overweening addiction to using the courts for social debate is bad for the nation and bad for the judiciary. <laughs> <laughs> States' rights and federalism Gorsuch was described by Justin Marceau, a professor at the University of Denver's Sturm College of Law, as a predictably socially conservative judge who tends to favor state power over federal power." Marceau added that the issue of states' rights is important since federal laws have been used to reel in «rogue» state laws in civil rights cases. <laughs> <laughs> Assisted suicide In July 2006, Gorsuch's book, The Future of Assisted Suicide and Euthanasia, which was developed from his doctoral thesis, was published by Princeton University Press. In the book, Gorsuch makes clear his personal opposition to euthanasia and assisted suicide, arguing that the U.S. should retain existing law banning assisted suicide and euthanasia on the basis that human life is fundamentally and inherently valuable, and that the intentional taking of human life by private persons is always wrong. Topic. Professional associations Gorsuch has been active in several professional associations throughout his legal career. Those associations have included the American Bar Association, the American Trial Lawyers Association, Phi Beta Kappa, the Republican National Lawyers Association, and the New York, Colorado, and District of Columbia Bar Associations. Personal life Gorsuch and his wife, Marie Louise Gorsuch, who is a British citizen, met at Oxford. They married at her Church of England parish in Henley on Thames in 1996. They live in Boulder, Colorado, and have two daughters. Gorsuch has timeshare ownership of a cabin on the headwaters of the Colorado River outside Granby, Colorado, with associates of Philip Anschutz. He enjoys the outdoors and fly fishing and on at least one occasion went fly fishing with Justice Scalia. He raises horses, chickens, and goats, and often arranges ski trips with colleagues and friends. He has authored two non-fiction books. 
His first book, The Future of Assisted Suicide and Euthanasia, was published by Princeton University Press in July 2006. He is a co-author of The Law of Judicial Precedent, published by Thomson West in 2016. Religion Justice Neil Gorsuch is the first member of a mainline Protestant denomination to sit on the Supreme Court since the retirement of John Paul Stevens in 2010. He also has strong ties to the Roman Catholic Church. Neil and his two siblings, brother J.J. and sister Stephanie, were raised as Roman Catholics and attended weekly Mass. Neil Gorsuch later attended Georgetown Preparatory School, a Roman Catholic Jesuit school in North Bethesda, Maryland, from which he graduated in 1985. Gorsuch's wife, Louise, is British born. The two met while Neil was studying at Oxford. Louise was raised in the Church of England. The two married at St. Nicholas's Anglican Church in Henley on Thames. When the couple returned to the United States, they started attending Holy Comforter, an Episcopal parish in Vienna, Virginia, where he also volunteered as an usher. Church records indicate that the Gorsuches were members of Holy Comforter. He later attended attended St. John's Episcopal Church in Boulder, Colorado, considered a liberal church because it kept an open-door policy for the LGBT community prior to legislation establishing gender preference equality laws. The Episcopal Church and the Church of England are both members of the Anglican Communion, which considers itself to be both Catholic and Protestant but rejects papal authority. After marrying in a non-Roman Catholic ceremony and joining an Episcopal church, Gorsuch has not publicly stated if he considers himself a Roman Catholic who is also a Protestant or simply a Protestant. <laughs> <laughs> Awards and honors Gorsuch is the recipient of the Edward J. Randolph Award for Outstanding Service to the Department of Justice, and of the Harry S. Truman Foundation Stevens Award for Outstanding Public Service in the Field of Law. Topic Bibliography Gorsuch, Neil M. September 3, 2016. Legacy of Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia Video 59-59 minutes. Tenth Circuit Court Bench and Bar Conference. Colorado Springs, Colorado, C-SPAN. Access to Affordable Justice, A Challenge to the Bench, Bar, and Academy PDF. Judicature. 103, 46. Autumn 2016. Retrieved February 14, 2017. Of Lions and Bears, Judges and Legislators, and the Legacy of Justice Scalia. Case Western Reserve Law Review. 66, 4, 905-20. April 7, 2016. Retrieved February 15, 2017. 13th Annual Barbara K. Olson Memorial Lecture PDF. Harvard Journal of Law and Public Policy. 37 3, 743-56, 2014. Retrieved February 18, 2017. Effective Brief Writing, in Appellate Practice Update, 2013 Denver, Clee in Colorado, 2013 Co-author with Nathan B. Coates, Stephanie E. Dunn, Blaine D. Meir, Jesse H. Witt. Intention and the Allocation of Risk, in Reason, Morality, and Law, The Philosophy of John Finnis, John Keown and Robert P. George eds, Oxford, Oxford University Press, 2013. doi, 10.1093, a reply to Raymond Tallis on the legalization of assisted suicide and euthanasia, The Journal of Legal Medicine, 2007, Volume 28, pp. 327 to 32. Doi 10.1080/0194764.2010.0001. Doi 101947640701554468. The Assisted Suicide Debate, The Times Literary Supplement, May 18, 2007. The Future of Assisted Suicide and Euthanasia. Princeton, N.J., Princeton University Press, 2006. ISBN 978-1-4008-3034-3. Settlements in Securities Fraud Class Actions, Improving Investor Protections, Wash. Leg. Foundation, April 2005, and Andrews Class Action Litigation Reporter, August 2005. Liberals and Lawsuits, The National Review Online, February 2005. No Loss, No Gain, Legal Times, January 31, 2005. 
FTC Workshop Protecting Consumer Interests in Class Actions, Workshop Transcript, Panel 2, Tools for Ensuring that Settlements are Fair, Reasonable, and Adequate, Panelist, September 13-14, 2004. Transcript published at 18 Geo. J. Legal Ethics 1197. Letter to the Editor, Nonpartisan Fee Awards, Washington Post, March 18, 2004, at page A30. The Legalization of Assisted Suicide and the Law of Unintended Consequences, a Review of the Dutch and Oregon Experiments and Leading Utilitarian Arguments for Legal Change, 2004 WISC. L. Rev. 1347 2004. The Right to Receive Assistance in Suicide and Euthanasia, with Particular Reference to the Law of the United States, Ph. D. Dissertation, University of Oxford, 2004. Justice White and Judicial Excellence, distributed by UPI, May 4, 2002. The Right to Assisted Suicide and Euthanasia, 23 Harv. J. L. and Pub. Poli 599 2000 PMID 12524693 Rule of Law, The Constitutional Case for Term Limits, Wall Street J., November 4, 1992, at page A15. Michael Guzman, Will the Gentleman Please Yield? A Defense of the Constitutionality of State Imposed Term Limits, 20 Hostra L. Rev. 341 1991, also published as Cato Institute Policy Analysis No. 178 1992. See also Donald Trump judicial appointment controversies Donald Trump Supreme Court candidates List of law clerks of the Supreme Court of the United States